Hey, what's up, guys? This is Alex, and today I'm gonna make an analysis of the solo strings which I used in my latest track, which I posted yesterday. Uh, that library I use for the solo strings is called Cine Samples Cine Strings Solo, and I'm gonna make a review of it. And if you miss the track, this is sort of what it sounds like. So the solo strings are the ones that are much more centric in this track and are more noticeable. Now, the reason for that is that usually in an orchestral setting, the soloist instruments are in the front and they are more expressive because they sound way less blurred than a string ensemble, for example, because a string ensemble is like, um, I don't know, 10 violinists, 10 violas and 10 cellos, no, maybe less than 10 cellos. But yeah, you have a group of strings string instruments playing together and every player plays, plays the same line but there's gonna be a bit of you know a bit of um blurriness because not everyone plays in the same exact ways with the same exact um uh, robotic uh timings some notes are gonna be a bit off some are gonna be much more in the front so the sound of an ensemble is way more blurry the sound of a solo string um or a solo instrument in general is more precise because it's just one player so you can play some very expressive lines and uh, they stand out quite a, quite a lot because, again, they are super precise, super dry. And uh, that's why uh, solo instruments sound the way they do. So you might ask yourself, yeah, what's, why should I use a solo string library instead of a string ensemble library? The reason is that like you play more expressive lines uh, with more freedom and more precision. And it's actually pretty like the sound is quite different. You're going to hear, um, for example, this part here. It sounds much more, I don't know, precise compared to the ensemble. Now, they're also playing kind of different things. Ensemble is less incisive, so that's why you should, like if you want to use solo strings, that's the reason why you should do it to write things that are more incisive. Now, the library I used for these uh, these strings is called Cine Sample Cine String Solo. It's a super complicated name. So the first thing when I tried this library, the first thing I noticed is Sony Picture Studios Los Angeles. I went into the manual and I read that this library was recorded at Sony Studios and it was mixed by Dennis Sands, which is like a big shot in Hollywood, like in the mixing of movie scores and stuff like that. Those are the people who Cine Sample worked with to make this library. So the quality of it, uh, well, it is quite, uh, you know, impressive. Now, the other thing that got me hooked on Cine Samples in general is the way their library are programmed. Now, what I recommend you to do when, when you buy a new library is to always go on the manual and read it because you're going to see some things and read about some things that maybe you couldn't imagine if you didn't read the manual. So there are many tricks that I found out about this library, about how to use this library in an optimal way by reading the manual. Many functions that uh, you see here, but they're not so uh, you know, uh, noticeable for someone who doesn't know the library. So today I'm going to talk about a, bit, about a bit of those. But since I only use this library for this track so far, because I, only, I got it like last month, uh, I might not know it entirely, so I'm going to talk about what I noticed. And, you know, I might, like, there are some things that maybe I could have done better that I didn't know better myself. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be a review based on, uh, on my impression of this library, which I formed by writing this track. So, <clears throat> with that caveat out of the way, let's get into Cine Samples. Now, as I said, the most impressive thing for me was the programming. The reason why I say this is that other than the library having a natural sound, which is quite good, especially on the cellos, 
uh, what impressed me is that you can tweak the sound to an insane extent. So the first thing you notice here is that you have the multiple mic positions, positions like in every library. But the, the cool thing I like here is that you also have presets. So you have like full mix, closed room and surround mics, which you can tweak to your liking. But if you want to, you know, experience, um, you know, different types of sound and stuff like that, you can use, instead of having to tweak the microphone yourself, you can use these presets, which are pre-made to, uh, you know, um, make your life kind of easier as a composer. So you, you can just check out what is the best configuration by tweaking the presets. So I go here, I use Danny Sands on everything because that's the one I like. But if I use Dry and Close, for example, Um, actually, let me disable isotope ozone because it's creating a bit of a delay and there is also the problem that I use the purge function, so there are some samples which are not loaded into the RAM. That's why it's lagging like that. But yeah, so for example, this is the dry and close. And this is the sense. And this is the ambient instead. Yeah, it's super delayed because it's loading the samples, but you get the idea of what, like, how it impacts the sound. So, like, what this does is tweaks the microphone for microphones for you, so you can have an idea of, you know, the type of sound you can achieve. And if you're a beginner, this is helpful because beginners do not know how to tweak the microphone to get the best positions and stuff. But even if you just use a Dennis Sands position, uh, it's going to sound awesome. And what I did is I used this and I used my reverb as usual to, uh, you know, manage how far and close the instrument sounds. And these strings, they sound much more in the front compared to everything else in the orchestra because of the way I set it up. So uh, Dennis Sands and a bit of reverb is the... Uh, sound I chose. Now you can, with this, decide how far close and stuff like that you want the uh, strings to sound. And since these are sort of strings, again, they're very precise. So if you use the driest settings, the closest, it's going to sound like it's in front of you, literally. So that's one thing I like about this library. And the other way you can tweak the sound of the, the library uh, is with this settings page. Now there are many settings that start from the effects and uh, for example, in this library, there is one thing, like the, the articulations that we have. Uh, this is actually the only, probably the only bad thing I found about it, bad, is that the articulations are the most, most basic ones. So you have legato, sustain, and spiccatos, and, you know, pizzicatos, and tremolos, I think. But you don't have to have, like, the advanced articulations, like sordino, or flautando, and those things. But some of these articulations, like sordino, even if we don't have them officially, we can emulate them by tweaking these, you know, um, effects. So if I want, for example, to have some violin sordino, so some violin with a bit less sharpness, I would just go here and enable the low pass and just tweak it a little bit. Until it sounds like a sordino. So you can do that. And you can even do a cool thing, like you can distort your sound because there is a distortion. And I think this effects module, you have it in pretty much almost all the main uh, Cine samples, orchestral libraries. So that's their modus operandi, which I like. So let's, for example, take this cello. Maybe with some distortion and low pass, we can actually make it sort of like a bram or something like that. So I'm going to just put max distortion, hoping the computer doesn't explode. <laughs> So you can do stuff like this and you can, I don't know, add some flangers and do some crazy things, but you don't, you don't have idea what you're doing, but now we have something sort of like a dubstep bass. And so you have the freedom to do whatever you want with this. And um, that's one thing I like. And you, you might say, all right, but I could have done this even outside of the, of the sample library. Of course, you could have used the mixer and put your distortion as you wanted it. But the thing that the fact that they allow you to do this internally is pretty cool, in my opinion. It makes it easier for you. And uh, you can even like tweak your patch and then you save it as, I don't know, distorted cello and you save it inside the patches of Cine String Solo. So whenever you want to use that distorted cello again, you can just import it from the patches. 
that you see. So yeah, that's uh, one thing I like here. And uh, this page also allows you to set how the round robins are handled. So with round robin, I mean like the same, like a single note, like for example, if we are playing spiccato note on the cello, uh, for example, this. What the hell? Oh, uh, wait a second. If we're playing a spiccato note, why is it not changing the articulation? Uh, I'm gonna try another another instrument. Let's go on the violins. I, I might have touched something which I wasn't supposed to touch before. Let's play spiccato. So with round robin, what I mean is that whenever you play one note, there are different samples assigned to that note. Like what you hear is a different sample every time. It's not the same exact recording of that same note. It's uh, every note has like 10 recordings assigned to it. And whenever you play it, uh, the, the library cycles through those different recordings so that there are a bit of no nuances and details which change so that you don't, you don't have you don't get that machine gun effect while you play the same note. Now with that's what round robins are. Now with this, you can decide to cycle them, you know, to cycle them normally or to trigger a random round robin among those 10 every time. So you can do that. And um, you also have the sample start where you can tweak when the sample starts. So it removes a bit of that, that I think, but yeah. So yeah, and uh, there's also some options about legato, which I didn't use, but it, here it seems you can automate the speed and the intensity of the legato. Now, if you don't know what legato is, and I might have mentioned this already in my tutorials, stuff like that. And by the way, if you do not know me, I make tutorials on how to write orchestral music. So if you're interested in learning, interested in learning how to compose cinematic music, um, you may want to check the rest of this channel. But yeah, if you do not know what legato is, so for example, when uh, you know a string player is playing, it's gonna do something like this. Sorry, uh, something like this. Maybe it shows more on the cello. Let's play it on the cello. Like it's when when you change like when you change notes notes while playing a string instrument, you're gonna do a little bit, a bit of a slide between those notes. It's gonna it's not gonna be. So that slide is called legato. Now with this library, there are many things you can do with the legato. In here, it says you can change the speed and intensity. I'm not sure what they mean with intensity, actually, because I didn't check that part of the manual, I think, or I did, but I didn't use it. But uh, I think you can also change the speed of the legato by um, depending on how strong and how powerful you're playing. So depending on the velocity of the note. So if I play on a low velocity, it's going to be a slower, like slower legato, but if I play at uh, a high velocity, you notice it's faster. And this is because I think the library itself has an engine inside it that kind of determines, by the way you're playing, how fast you want the legato to be. So if you play like, even if you play fast notes like that, it's going to, you know, it's going to make the legato faster compared to... I think like I think I read in the in the manual that it has this intelligent engine that can interpret your performance and then creates a legato that fits. And maybe these two knobs are gonna you know tweak and make it a bit more precise. Another cool thing you can do with the legato is uh, notice when we go in the um, mapping page. Now the mapping page here you can set your key switches and articulations. If you don't know what key switches and articulations are, go check out my tutorial about articulations because I'm not going to repeat myself here because it's a bit of a long stretch. Uh, it would be a bit of a long stretch. But in here, you can set up your own conditions for triggering particular articulations. So for the legatos, actually for every articulation, I use the key switch as condition. And every articulation has its own key switch, except for these two that they have the same. So we have legato standard and legato expressive here. And they are both in the C minus two key switch. So whenever I play here, legato is going to trigger the, the two of them, but it's actually going to trigger only one of them based on, like it's going to initially, the, the key switch triggers both, but depending on the second condition here, which you can set up on every articulation, and I set the velocity as a second condition for the legatos, 
it's gonna play one or the other. So what I did here is I said, when I play the C minus two key switch, if I'm playing that key switch, that note on that key switch at a low velocity, play the standard legato, which is this one. Like linear. But if I'm playing at a high velocity from 80 to 127, which can, by the way, tweak here, um, what it, what I said is if I'm playing at that high velocity, you play the legato expressive, which is this one, which has a bit more vibrato into it. It's just a bit, a bit of a detail that I assigned to it. Now, I think you can do this with kind of every articulation. You can just, you know, manage them however you want them to. We want them, you want to manage them. So maybe I could even do one thing where the tremolo is playing on the same key switch as the legato, but only if I play a certain velocity or only if there's a certain MIDI control command, which is a, a certain value. Like you have the freedom to program your own uh, key switch uh, articulation triggers, however the hell you want to. And this is something I've never seen in another library. Um, you know, the thing about letting you change key switches, but even the thing about giving you a second trigger for that particular articulation. Now, the other cool thing about the legato is that another thing, again, you can do is to assign an accent to the legato. And with an accent, I mean um, an additional note from another, um, from another articulation. You do it here on accent overlay. You can choose between these articulations, so spiccato, staccato, and marcato. Let's take marcato. You can choose the volume at which that note is going to play and the threshold at like over which this note is going to be triggered, the velocity th threshold. So I'm going to put like 80 as velocity threshold and enable accented legato. What would happen now is that if I played, um, you know, a legato note on a velocity above 80, we're going to have a short marcato note as an overlay like layer on top of that legato note. And it's almost unhearable because it's just a accent overlay, but uh, it this serves serves to give more bite to your uh, you know legatos. But anyway, yeah, that's uh, another detail you can add it to your legatos. And here you have infinite sustains which kind of holds the note forever, but yeah. And there's also like this true legato and um, I guess fake legato. So I guess the fake legato, if you disable true legato, you're going to have a legato, which is like pretty much emulated by the algorithm. But if you enable true legato, you're going to like, when you trigger legato notes, you're going to trigger the actual samples that they recorded of actual, uh, you know, legato between the two notes that you're playing. So yeah, the legato in this, um, library is is uh, pretty true, like pretty realistic because it is recorded from our actual legato transition. Now you might say, yeah, but this is all trivial stuff. Actually, it's not because it's always it's also this type of things like the real, realisticness of the legato that makes your track sound more realistic or not. So you're going to see a lot of lots of composers when they buy string libraries, they ask, all right, but how is the legato? Because it's such an important detail. You hear it a lot in real, like orchestral music performed from, performed for real by real players. So it's an important degree of realism to have in your strings in general. But in solo strings, it's even more important because solo strings, again, they're the most type of expressive string instrument. And by being so much expre expressive, you want to be sure that they sound realistic because if they don't, you're, it's going to be super noticeable. So it's good that you have all these options in Cine Strings Solo. I'm not sure if Cine Strings, the normal version, has all these options, but this library, like, there is such a degree of freedom here that is just bananas, in my opinion. Now, the sound of it, you heard it and, uh, in, the, in the track. And again, if you didn't listen to the track, if you don't know the track, go on my channel, you can check it out. It's called Don't Be Afraid, it's Final Fantasy VIII Remix. Um, which I made uh, this month. And um, so, yeah, the thing I did here in this track is actually pretty simple. I just, there are some, you know, legato notes and that alternate each other with these sort of spiccatos. Uh, 
So it's pretty simplistic stuff, but um, you can do even better. Like in this track, I actually, like, I think this, this type of library really shines on, you know, the emotional passages and stuff like that and very quiet tracks. This track is like ignorant for how loud it is. So it was a bit tough to write a super expressive legato part and stuff like that, super expressive solo strings part. Although I do love a lot how this, you know, these sort of spiccatos um, cut through the mix, especially like compared to the rest of the strings. Actually, let's play this thing by isolating the percussion and everything. And notice how the solo strings are super noticeable. They sound more in the front because, again, uh, as I mentioned before, um, well, I tweaked the reverb in such a way to make them make them sound in the front, but they're also the less blurry sound. It's sort of like when you take a photograph, I don't know, of a beautiful girl, uh, you, like a good photographer, would put her in such, like, would focus the camera on her in such a way that you have the face of the girl and the girl be, like, super defined and the background be a bit blurry. That was happening in this part. Like the solo strings are in the front and they're super defined because of the, the natural sound they have as solo strings. And the orchestra in the back is the blurry background. And then, yeah, you have also this part where they do the same thing and it's like, oh my God. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much the thinking behind the solo strings in this track. Now, um, about Cine String Solo, this library, I think right now it's discounted to $279, which is an insane price for what you get. And also, I didn't mention it, but you also have a chamber ensemble patch. So that's another, another cool thing. And in the chamber ensemble patch, you I don't think you have the legato, but you have the same thing about the mapping and the same thing about, you know, the, the things I explained before. So you get, you know, uh, all the instruments from the bass, cellos, violas, first violins and second violins and the chamber ensemble. So uh, in a complete package at $279, if you want to buy it now, which I recommend you to do if you want to get it, because now it's discounted, the normal price is like $400, but it's actually a pretty nice price because... You know, when you like usually strings like, like solo strings libraries like this one, they usually do not come in a single package like this. Usually sample developers sell like hey, solo bass library here, solo shadow library, solo violin library separated, and each is like two hundred dollars or something like that. In this library, you get all the strings instrument, you get the chamber ensemble, and you pay four hundred, which is like less than one hundred dollars uh, per each string instrument. So it's quite a deal and the sound it's quality it's a quality sound the only thing i didn't like i didn't like is um other than the fact that we don't have articulations like flautando and stuff like that which are articulations you might not use uh so much because again like many people don't even know about those so other than that the other thing i wasn't so much of a fan of is how how the uh you know the violins and the violas sound weak compared to the cellos and the bass. So in the mixing, I had to, you know, go here and um, I just lowered the volume of the cellos and then of the basses and I brought the violas and the violins a bit higher. But yeah, they sound quite thinner compared to the cello as if, I don't, I'm not sure about that, but maybe they use a different recording for the cello, which is insane, while the rest is a bit more like, like it's okay. But as I showed before, even if you don't like the, the sound of things, you can tweak them as much as you want to inside the library. And then you can just save the patches, like, which is what I did here. I created my own mappings and I created this folder where I saved all the patches already tweaked by me. So if I want to use a patch in the same 
style or tweak tweaking I did, I'm just gonna you know open it from here. So yeah, you can tweak the sound, like tweak the patches to your liking until it sounds good to you. So I think this library is a pretty nice deal if you want a solo strings library. As usual, it needs to be said that this is my personal impression of this library after my first tryout. Maybe I just scratched the surface or this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, maybe you're going to have a different opinion of the library, but that's what I think about it after writing. You know, uh, don't be afraid. And if I forgot to mention something, feel free to ask questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer those as usual. But if you want to learn more about this library, like Sinus Samples, Sinus String Solo, go on Sinus Samples website and check out the page for the library, which I think is going to be full of demos and descriptions and you might want to be able to read the manual, so you might want to check that out if you're interested. So, yeah. Also, if you want to learn how to write orchestral music, I make tutorials, not, not only reviews and not only music, but I also make tutorials on how to write such music. I offer, also offer private lessons and feedback services. So you might want to check out the rest of this channel if you haven't already and share it with a friend who might earn some value out of it because what I want to do here is spread knowledge and value to other composers in the world to inspire them to follow their dreams in pursuing this career and educating them how to write music that sounds professional. So if you're that type of person who wants to do that or know someone who wants to do that, do check out the channel and share it with them so we can share value with the world. And that's it for today's video. I'll see you in the next one.